Sonic the Hedgehog from the Sega Genesis. I would give the game some backstory, like why it was created, how Sonic came to be and all that stuff, but if you consider yourself a Sonic fan, you probably know all about that stuff, so I'm just going to go straight in and review the video game. But how does the game hold up? I'm mainly going to look at a couple of categories. The first one I'm going to look at is the story. For an early 90s game, the story is extremely simple. The story is that there is this big fat evil scientist named Dr. Ivo Robotnik, or Eggman, whatever you prefer. He's getting innocent little wooden creatures known as Flickies, and he's putting them into mechs known as Badniks, and he's decided to try and send them out to make him do his bidding, and Sonic decides that he doesn't like it, and decides to go and stop him. This is actually a pretty engaging story for such an old game, considering Mario stories at the time, well, even modern times, you always got this fancy message. Thank you, Mario! But Princess Peach is locked away in another castle! Aw, oh, damn it! This is the sixth castle! Yeah, well, you know, we actually get a retro game where the story isn't. The girl's been kidnapped, go and save her. But the story doesn't matter, let's look at what's important. The gameplay. Now, this game came out on the Sega Genesis, however, I do not have a Sega Genesis, however, there are fortunately several different versions slash ports of the game on the Xbox 360, and so that is how I am able to play this game, because I play the game on the Xbox 360. As far as control-wise, Sonic doesn't really have that much as far as control. You can use the left analog stick or the D-pad, whatever console you're using, to make him move left and right, pressing down is going to have him duck or roll, depending on whether he's on a flat surface or a hill. Pressing up is going to make him look up, and A is going to make him jump. And that's really it. One thing I love about Sonic's control in this game, though, is that he actually controls like he has actual weight to him. In this game, it's all about gaining momentum. When you first start running, it takes him a while because he actually starts off pretty heavy. However, if you're able to start going at a continuous speed, you'll eventually get faster and faster and faster. There's also the introduction of what has become very, very popular, rings. Collecting rings is important in this game, and that's because you have several benefits from it. For starters, if you collect a hundred of them, you will receive an extra life. While Mario had the special mushroom, so if you grow, you'd get hit, and then if you got hit a second time, then you'd end up dying, However, Sonic's strategy of surviving is that you need to collect rings. If you get hit by an enemy, then you'll lose your rings. One thing I always found annoying though is that if you get hit, you lose all of them. You could have like 98 rings or so, but if you get hit by one enemy, every single one of those rings you've collected is gone. Which is extremely frustrating if you're trying to aim for collecting 100 rings. But as long as you have one ring, you will be able to survive. Unless you get crushed, run to spikes or bottomless pits. Then you're screwed. And last of all, if you collect 60 rings and you make it to the end of the stage with 60 rings, you'll be able to hop into the one enormous ring that will take you to a special stage where you can get a Chaos Emerald. And it is very popularly known that special stages suck in Sonic games. They really, really suck. Basically, your aim is to find the Chaos Emerald that is hidden somewhere in this special stage, and if you manage to find it, then congratulations. Or you can hit the goal points, considering if you see the word goal, ah, oh, so it must get there. Okay, you hit the goal points, and then you're booted out of the special stage with no Chaos Emerald. The goal icon has been extremely tedious with uh, the special stages, and honestly, if you remove the goal points, and just replace these goals with a short time limit on the special stages, I have a feeling they wouldn't be anywhere near as irritating as they are. And I honestly don't really care to collect all of the Chaos Emeralds, considering there really isn't that much benefit to getting them all. Yeah, you get a better ending, but it's only a slightly better ending. So if you want my advice, just ignore the special stages and just get on with the game. In fact, that's another problem I've always had when I first started playing this game. This game's difficulty. Now, I don't have a problem with hard games, but considering this was Sonic's first game, I thought it was a bit annoying. And I think to myself that I am so grateful that I have a version of the game that has infinite continues, because it is extremely easy to run out of lives in this game. I've only beaten the game like two or three, four times maximum. 
And the reason why is because whenever I play the game, I always often stop at Labyrinth Zone for either because I think I've been spending too long in the game and I just get bored. I'm not saying I want games to be a cakewalk. I really don't. I just think that for a first game, it's pretty frustrating. But at the same time, with practice and skill and patience, ironically, you can actually get better. Now, at first, I've always just wanted to get through the game as quickly as I can, and I always wanted to try and speedrun the stages. However, because of it, I would die and die and die and die and die. Marble Zone was considered such a frustrating level, in my opinion, because I was dying left and right, and I could not even get past the second act. However, now I am more patient with the level, and I'm not always just trying to rush myself through everything. And since I'm more patient and I take my time, it rewards me and I'm now able to actually get through the stage more fluidly and now if I'm actually committed I can actually get through all of Marble Zone without losing a single life because how hard this game is really depends on how you play the game ultimately yeah it's a hard game and can get pretty frustrating especially if you don't have infinite continues however if you're patient and you slow down it will reward you from being able to get through a little more fluidly and it kind of does reward you with speed because my fastest playthrough of the game is when I actually slowed down to be able to avoid the hazards which meant I died less which meant I got through the stages faster and speaking of stages in general let's look at the stages themselves Sonic basically has to go through six different stages Green Hill, Marble Zone, Spring Yard Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Starlight Zone Scrap Ring Zone, and then there's the final boss, which is known as Final Zone. But I don't count that as an actual zone itself, and just really just a boss fight, so I say that this game has six levels. And a lot of them are very iconic. For better, or for worse. Green Hill Zone is known as one of the best first levels of all time, and that's just because it's such a big, bright, colourful, and very luscious environment. And it's very easy to just speed through. However, one thing I find really ironic and kind of like a con, in my honest opinion though, is that Sega is always going, Hey guys, check out our new mascot. His name is Sonic the Hedgehog and he's extremely fast. Look at this level where Sonic is going really fast. Or this other level where Sonic is going really fast. This guy is way faster than Mario. Genesis does what Nintendo. I find it extremely ironic when the game brags that you are fast, big, epic, fun, intense, fast-paced platforming, and yet half of the game is extremely slow. Marble Zone, Labyrinth Zone, and Scrap Brain Zone. Three levels, that's half of the game. And what about the boss fights? Well, some of them are okay, like the Eggman's rotating ball thing in Green Hill Zone, or the spiky bomb thingies that he drops that you have to throw back at him. However, there are also some extremely frustrating boss fights, like the final boss fight. It's rather stupid, in my opinion. It's like, Robotnik is just hiding away in these big container thingies, and you just sort of have to hit them. So really, it's not that good. But my goodness, I... HATE the boss fight at the end of Labyrinth Zone. The amount of frustration that this boss fight has given me, it's one of the reasons why I actually haven't beaten this game that many times before, even though I've had it for a couple of years. Now you're probably thinking, it can't be that bad. Okay, let's look at it. First, you need to be able to actually catch up to him, because you're elevating in this very confined thing, and you need to climb up this big elevator-like area. Okay. That's the first thing, so you actually need to be able to keep up with him, otherwise you're not going to be able to hit him. Okay, what's the next thing you need to be worried about? Okay, you're being chased by water, and we all love being underwater in this level, so yeah, you need to basically avoid the water like the plague, especially since there are no bubbles to pick up, so if the water comes over you, you're in trouble, basically. Not only is that keeping you, but you can't hurry up or anything, because there are tons of enemies and hazards that you have to overcome and getting up the area as fast as you possibly can all that's going to do is get you hit by enemies and hazards it's extremely frustrating so you're slowed down because you need to avoid all these enemies and hazards all while this is going on you have no rings to pick up 
And so if you have no ranks, there is no room for error. And so you need to avoid these enemies as quickly as you possibly can, while the water's rising up, and above all this, oh no, Robotnik is getting away! I need to be out of the game, because I need to hit this guy eight times! And oh my goodness, this is extremely frustrating! I got so many game overs because of this boss fight. I actually even went onto YouTube to find out how you actually beat this guy. And I find out that all you have to do is just get to the top. You don't actually have to chase after Robotnik, you just have to get to the top of the area. I thought it would just be a never-ending trail and you just have to keep going over and over and on and on and on and on. That's how you finally hit him eight times. But no, you actually just have to get to the top. If there's one thing that Sonic has been famously known for, it's really good music. Green Hill Zone is one of the most iconic stage music of all time. It's so great, upbeat and catchy and it's so nice and I never get sick of it. This is such an iconic song, I even did my own cover of it back on my Super Sonic Cory channel. And so those are my thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog, the original from 1991. I'm signing off and I still seriously need to come up with a better catchphrase to end off my videos, but bye. Cheers.